Okay, so we're asked here to prove this result here, okay? So it says show that the log of x, y equals the log of x plus the log of y. So essentially, when you add two logs together, okay, for the same base here, it equals to the log of the product of those two terms there. Okay, and we're going to prove that. So um, there's a standard way of doing that, right, which you sort of need to memorize the sort of approach. So what I do to start with is we say, look, we let the first logarithm here, log to the base a of x equal to say m right use the letter m and then if that's the case then okay of course if we've got log to the base a of x equals to m the m then is the power isn't it because that's what the logarithm is equal to logarithm is equal to the power where a is your base what we can do then is we can get rid of the logarithm rewrite this and think about swinging that base over the other side so we get then our x equals to, you take that a over, the base over, a to the power m. Okay. Um, and the same then with the other logarithm, the log to the base a of y, we'll say we let that equal to say n. All right. So same situation here. Remember, the logarithm is equal to a power. So we're saying that n is the power here, where a is the base. So I'll we'll swing the base over, take it over to the other side, it gets rid of the logarithm. Okay, so I'll have then y equals to taking the base over a to the power n. All right. Now let's look at the result that it's supposed to give us. Okay, it's supposed to give us the product then in in the single logarithm. So the product would be x y. Yeah. Okay. So x y obviously means x times y. The product there we can use what we've got for x and y here. So we can say this is the same as a to the m times a to the n. Okay multiplying them the product there and using simple rules of indices okay the rules of indices of course when you're times in terms we'll add the powers won't we okay so that's there just using what we learn about indices times in the terms we add the powers and notice what i've got here then i've got x y equals a to the power m plus n so i've got like my base here to the power m plus n I can rewrite this as a logarithm. Because I've got my base here and my power, what I can do is I can swing the base back over. So I'll have a lo create a logarithm, logarithm to the base A of the product xy will equal then the power. So my base is swung back to create my logarithm and I've got then equal to the power here, which is m plus n. Okay, I'll notice then m is added to n there, okay. So I can then substitute back in what m and n both are. So remember up here, m I defined as this, and n I defined as that. So we've now shown that the log of x plus the log of y is equal to the log of x, y. So that's part A. In part B, okay, we're asked to um, find all values of x for this equation here. So I'll just write it out. So it's log to the base a in all instances there. Okay. And um, we're asked then to solve it. So what I'm going to do here is just use the laws of logarithms that I know of. Okay. So in this case, because it's log this, take away log that. Okay. It becomes, you can make that a single logarithm. Remembering then that it divides. Okay. So we've got a single logarithm now on the left hand side. Just by noting that it was minus. So when you have a minus, it's then read as a single logarithm where you divide the terms. On the right hand side, then you take the three up. So that's the other law of log logarithms that we know. Take the, the number in front up, so it becomes a power. So 2 to the power 3. Okay. Now, notice what we've got. We've got a single logarithm left-hand side, single logarithm right-hand side. We can get rid of the logs. Okay, we can cancel the logs, get rid of them. We de-log in both sides. So we end up having then 11x squared plus 16x plus 5 all over 4x squared plus 1 equals to what we've got here now 2 cubed is 8 okay what i would do then is take the bottom take the denominator up then so i'll have 11x squared plus 16x plus 5 equals to 8 
bracket then 4x squared plus 1. So this becomes 11x squared plus 16x plus 5 equals them. When I multiply this out, I get 32x squared plus 8. And then get everything onto one side. So I'll get 21x squared uh, minus 16x okay, plus 3 equals to 0. I think I've done that right. So I'll just check now. Take that over. becomes 21x squared. Take that over. becomes minus 16x. Take that over. It becomes a minus 5. So 8 minus 5 is 3. So that's right. So we've got a quadratic here which we need to solve. Okay. And um, when we solve it, two brackets, of course, what we tend to do is put 21x in both brackets. Yeah. So the multiply add thing over here. So in this case now, well, we've got a 21 in front, so I'm going to times that by the end number. So 21 times 3 is 63, add up to give minus 16. So we need a pair of numbers that multiply to give 63. Now, I know my tables there, and I know 7 and 9 times to give 63, which is quite nice. And, um, of course, minus 16. If you make them both minuses, they'll both um, add up then to minus 16. So minus 7, minus 9. Don't forget then you need to divide by um, divide by 21, yeah, because we times by 21. First bracket is a factor of 7. Second bracket is a factor of 3. So that then will conveniently cancel the 21 underneath. So I get then 3x minus 1 equals 0 or 7x minus 3 equals 0, okay? So x will equal a third, or x will equal to three sevenths. I just got to check then, are both solutions valid? Well, in the question, you just said given x is greater than zero, okay? Um, and we've got two positive solutions there.